What's the greatest thing that you could be given right now? The greatest thing that you can give to this world to prevail against darkness, to overcome the pain, the hurt, the burdensome that you feel inside is your voice. Your voice is the talent, the key, the signature, the symphony, the arena, the power, the ability, the blessing, the virtue, the crown, the joy, the oil, the reason, the productivity, the asset of the divine nature, the eternal emerald of the seraphim, of the mirror, of the emerald, of the reflections, of the swimming pool of divinity, of the, yeah, your voice. Your voice instantaneously breaks through satanic powers. If you hold your voice in, you could pray for 27 hours inside, etc. And there's a blessing in that, but your voice automatically has the authoritative sound and reference and degree behind it that kickstarts and launch and diminishes evil instantaneously. So a season that you've been waiting on for two weeks within could initiate and be ushered into that oil and marvelous majesty just from five minutes of your voice. So spending time spreading your voice of the truth of what you know, of what's been done, of how you feel. Counseling sessions are powerful, but the whole objective is to get you to speak your voice. And the moment you notice you start speaking, you feel better because you don't hold in your issues. You don't hold in your problems. You speak what you know, you speak what's been given to you, you speak what you represent, you speak what you feel, okay? And that is gonna bless you beyond imagination. That's gonna heal you, it's gonna free you. We need freedom in these times. We're living in some dark, evil times. And our personal agenda is actually demonic. It's very decaying. I noticed in my own life, years that I spent trying to, any personal development is great and it's necessary, but when your life is about you, 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 your life becomes very miserable. You'll get a bunch of money, you'll get what you want, but you'll be a very miserable person. But when the direction and the aim is focused towards another, when it's focused towards, sac you're married to God. So when it's about sacrificing and taking your sufficiency and depleting it all in serving him and bringing him pleasure, he's the one that created you. So you're gonna find I'm in front of this church right now and I'm in front of my destiny right now. And I'm in front of all the scenarios and possibilities right now and I'm getting healed right now. Victory is spreading out from both of us and it's glorious. And so the greatest weapon or the greatest thing that can occur is being changed. If you're doing something and you're succeeding in it, but it's not changing you as a person, you would want to reconsider or keep that thing. Because I discovered that you can go towards success and it's the complete opposite of God's will for you. So you'll find restriction, you'll find frustration, you'll find pain, you'll find misery. When you go towards the direction of a spirit, it becomes so easy, it becomes so weathery, it becomes so zest, it becomes so zen, it becomes so meditative, it becomes so pleasurable, it becomes so just easy to flow into your abundance, to flow into your wealth. And I still believe with all my heart and all the day and every religion, every color, every human race, every discussion or topic we could ever discuss, that Jesus is the truth. He's the answer and he's the way. He's the only one that can set us free. I've studied many religions, I've talked to many people, and through the discernment and the Holy Spirit, I can see and see that if you're free or not. I can discern and detect when I look inside, like, no, okay. Jesus Christ is the only one that is gonna set your soul free. When I do other things, apart from him, I'm miserable. My life gets dark. But when I start going back to him, running back to him with all my heart, in the past 32 years of existence, that's when my soul is healed. That's when my soul becomes free. That's when my mind becomes free. That's when the darkness flees. That's when the chains break. And I've discovered it has nothing to do with circumstances. Doesn't matter if you have kids, if you don't have kids, you have a lot of money, you don't have money. We all are gonna go through the same thing. And it's the light of him that's gonna differentiate us from others. It's the light of him, Christ. It's gonna set us apart. So we aim to magnify and glorify him today in the most simplest way. I'm blessed today because I got what I wanted, but now I want more. I got more than I expected financially, but now I want more. But you know what? My energy and my pursuit towards that has depleted because I found memory. I found misery. So it re-led me back into my intercourse, my intimacy, my intimate time with God. I've been reading my Bible more than ever. I've been redevoting my life to the pathway in pursuit of holiness more than ever. I've been seeking the face of God while I've been crying from my soul because the trial that I had to go through this past month was woo, insanity. Guess what though? He brought me through like he always brings me through. He shined glorified light inside of my spirit like he always does. He gave me more opportunity than ever before. It left me, I didn't even want it. But now I see the true prize is in the center of his will. That's where the glory is. That's where the wealth is. That's where everlasting life is. That's where the power is. 
That's where the peace is. And that's where who I am is. How many of us don't know who we are? One minute we happy, one minute we sad. We get what we want, then we realize we more miserable even though we got what we wanted. Where you are, who you are, where you going, who you running to. Amen. I like a nice, quiet place with God. Because I can reference through the silence. And I can sit in the silence and begin to detect his presence. Your thought, your wonderful ability to think and produce magnetic, magnificent ideals without the presence is meaningless. Even though it seems glorious in nature, even though it seems spontaneous and idealistic reasoning and an apprehension to change the world without presence in being led by the divine master, it is meaningless. So it's what's hidden under the engine and why you're driving because of who and whom and the purposes of the, the one everlasting. It is deep, deep meditation going deeper you can travel in your voice when you open your voice you go d deeper into the wording of that system you go deeper into the mechanic and the engine behind that system you go deep into the interface and the creation of that system you go deeper into the Elo elohim and the chamber of that creation then you go deeper in behind and behind the curtain behind the next curtain behind the next veil and these momentarily systems are being unveiled and so they instantaneously eradicate illusions so many mirrors and reflections of illusions begin to cloud us and we're trapped. And we think the ability, see, God gave you abilities, but the abilities he gave you will not save you. Only he can save you. The power he gave you to exercise, that won't even save you. Only himself will save you. So when you depend on an ability or you depend on a measure of power that was given to you, you won't shine at the brightest frame rate. You'll feel empowered to a higher degree, which is absolutely glorious. Because I, I know in these times, a lot of times it seems harder to find empowerment versus years ago. But if we've been called to step up our game, then we have to look at our appetite because God has put us on a strict diet. And so we have to check our diet and we have to check our appetites and we have to check. See, before you even think about launching, before you even think about accelerating, forget about all that. You need to go back to the schedule and write down and jot down and keep in the front of your mind what is expected of you in this season, in this time. And things can shift. Maybe the last one was develop all the relationships you can. Now this one is withdraw yourself from all those and just focus on me. And you, it's, those hidden, it's those hidden quiet whispers in your hidden quiet time and the voice has a synchronization behind it. So if you talk about the whispers of God, then you have to be in the quiet time of his spirit because time and voice will meet again and again. And a strategy, see, it's about God giving to you, not even so much. See, when we talk about, I've been studying this for years in my, just in meditating my own life about action, take action, take action. Okay, you can take action all day in the wrong avenues. What it is about is being able to receive a word from heaven, a word from God. That is the action of his ability to move into your life. So we're always taking, see, the world has deceived us. We're taking so much action that we haven't learned how to allow God to take action on our behalf. And it's an opposite spectrum because I had to learn to fall in love with the rest. The world tells me you got one life. Work as hard as you can. Open up as many opportunities as you can. Okay, and then God's telling me, Matthew, I need you just to devote your life to rest. Be alone. You keep trying to work for money. You keep trying to work so hard. If you would just rest, withdraw yourself from that. Boy, I'd have you so rich in a heartbeat. I'd have you owning 15 churches on your street. In one second, I can do that. But you have to redevote the pattern and spread it out like a stream and live submerged in that ambience. And it must be full hearted devotion to each paradigm for the full activation because God's a full God. God, I think God is tired of giving us small measures just to reward us. He wants full hearted devotion, full hearted sacrifice, full hearted worship, full hearted intensity, full hearted prayer, full hearted YouTube channel, full hearted everything. So we can overdrive and override and rule and reign in you. Now let's go.